I was 15 when I was diagnosed with cancer. I was age 20. I was 17 when I was first diagnosed. I was 29 when I was diagnosed. I was 16 years old. The first words when I heard cancer, I looked at my mom and dad more than anything about me. I looked at them to see how they would deal with it. So when I was diagnosed with cancer, I was actually a doctor in training um, myself. So it was a unique position to be in. I relapsed my junior year of college. Um, it was actually on my birthday. It was a whirlwind. It, um, I got diagnosed and then two days later I went back for surgery and then started chemo right away and it was um, an influx of doc doctors all the time and information and stuff. It, it sucked uh, just knowing that you know you just have to stop your life right in the middle of it and you know a lot of things are going to change and more of the lifestyle change and then you get hit with you know all the side effects with the chemotherapy and surgery and everything else. It was explained to me but how much I processed I don't know that that was it definitely wasn't everything that I was told. A cancer diagnosis in the past, I would say, had a much worse prognosis. So over the years, um, survival rates have been increasing steadily, particularly in the reproductive age group of patients. As we're curing more and more patients, we're focusing more and more on life after cancer, whereas in the past, we were just focused on cure. I think, you know, discussing treatment um, you know, you go into a lot of the details with your physicians. I think a lot of what you want to know is kind of the bottom line in terms of how you're going to feel after it's done or, you know, what your chance of survival is. I mean, it was scary when uh, he started talking about the treatments and what the side effects would be because, I mean, I'm not one for puking and everything like that. I mean, last time I said you ruined my streak because it was in second grade. So I was scared a little bit about getting sick, but I knew that God was on my side and that I could handle it and I was ready to take on whatever and that's pretty much it. It was kind of all like a big blur. Um, you're more concentrated on your diagnosis than anything and how it's just going to change your life from here on out. Um, so that was always the focus. Now that I've completed my bone marrow transplant, I look back and um, I I'm not really too concerned with it because I'm just glad to get through the bone marrow transplant successfully. I remember getting a 20 page packet listing all the different side effects of every drug that I was going to be taking. Um, I remember there, it was overwhelming, the different talks, it was a lot to take in a lot to process. Uh, cancer therapy, which includes you know, chemotherapy, radiation, or surgery, depending upon the type of cancer they have um, and the stage of cancer that they have at diagnosis, may have a, a, a negative impact on their ability to, to have kids later in life, whether they be male or female. It's important for all patients to know that their oncology treatment could compromise their fertility and uh, to get the appropriate information uh, specific to their age and to their gender um, about the risks of the oncology treatment and what options are available for them to preserve their fertility. The most common diseases seen in adolescents and young adults that put fertility at risk include uh, some of the acute leukemias, particularly acute myelogenous leukemia which requires high-dose therapy, sometimes with bone marrow transplant to cure. Also sarcomas, which are uh, tumors of the muscles and bone, particularly Ewing sarcoma, osteosarcoma, and rhabdomyosarcoma. All of those require uh, chemotherapy, usually um, with uh, fertility damaging agents. In addition, they may require surgery and radiation um, as well. Um, also Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's lymphomas um, will require chemotherapy, and Hodgkin's disease um, almost always requires radiation in this population. 
which can affect fertility even if it's not directly aimed at the gonads because it affects your pituitary gland and your hypothalamus which helps regulate um, normal sexual development and function. When I was first diagnosed I was in high school and I felt like I was in high school but as soon as um, I started treatment and everything else I felt like I grew up right away. I was forced to think like an adult, think, you know, take care of myself more as an adult. I had to think about like consequences of what my actions were and stuff like that. I think it definitely jump-started my maturity. So a lot of what was discussed was the kind of potential side effects. So the idea that with chemo, they didn't really know what my fertility, the impact on my fertility would be down the line um, and trying to prepare for the future um, if fertility was going to be an issue. So a lot of it was, you know, discussing the, um, the possible impact of chemo, but not necessarily knowing exactly what was going to happen. Like, I, I remember it, but it was, I mean, because it was, you learn your diagnosis and then somebody comes and tells you these drugs, you know, they might cause you to go um, or might uh, have you, you know, become infertile. And, you know, here's sperm banking options. And to be honest, I was just like, well, whatever, you know, I don't even care. I don't think I remember really about uh, talking about the risks of fertility then because I think so much more was going through my head if I was going to survive because I didn't want to leave my mom and my family behind. But there was a thought, like, after time went through, and I was just like, am I going to be able to have kids? The biggest barriers now are uh, providing for patients the information and also for their oncologist the information that their oncology treatments may compromise their fertility. Um, it's important to have this conversation before the patients undergo their treatment uh, because that's the time to cryopreserve the tissue. If you don't present the options to the families and the patients, or specifically the patients, they may not know to ask questions and may not know to, that there are options available. So from in terms of my baseline knowledge, I mean, I, I realize it's something that um, we maybe touched upon in medical school, but hadn't really come up in my training. So I realized it wasn't something that I knew a lot about. Uh, I really didn't know much about it. I never looked into it. And when I found out I had to go through the process, I never thought about it because there's more important things to me. And anything about fertility, I had no idea. I didn't even know what the word meant when they told me, so I really had no idea. Just, you know, everything that I was educated about, you know, eighth grade health class and everything else, uh, you know, having kids and all that other good stuff. I didn't really think about the future much. Like, I heard what they were saying about possibly not having kids, about, you know, what could happen five years from now, about... Um, all kinds of things like that, but I focus more on today, the moment, like getting through the next, you know what I mean, two weeks versus two years. I was more worried about graduating high school, about going to college, not really about fertility or anything like that. No, I never really had any, I mean, I've heard stories, my mom's told me st before she would tell me stories about people she worked with that were told that they were going to be fertile and they've actually had children. No, they never taught me anything about fertility in high school. It was just like the regular sex education, that kind of deal. They never got taught any of this stuff though. Um, I think there's a lot out there in terms of pop culture and sadly even though I'm a doctor I think I had a reasonable amount, a reasonable amount of information that I took from, from that. I mean when you're in college it's more like you know preventing fertility happening so uh... Some of the misconceptions are uh, that taking time uh, to preserve fertility may delay cancer treatment. Uh, this may be true in some cases, but it's not always true. In many cases, it's possible to do the fertility preserving therapy within a few days uh, to a week or so. A postpubescent man um, can produce sperm, and so that's generally the gold standard for men is to cryopreserve or freeze sperm. Um, 
it's pretty easy to do, even though it may be awkward for certain patients. The benefit of cryopreservation preservation is that a man uh, can cryopreserve preserve his sperm now uh, before his oncology treatment, then he can go ahead and receive his oncology treatment, which may compromise his fertility, uh, but those cryopreserved sperm then will be available for him to use in the future um, with a partner uh, to produce his own genetic children. For women, again, this is after puberty, um, it's a little more challenging because they would require stimulation um, in order to get more mature eggs to a point where they can be removed um, and then subsequently fertilized. An additional challenge, though, for a young girl is that if she doesn't have a partner um, or is not uh, okay with the idea of using donor sperm, um, the only gold standard option in that situation is in vitro fertilization where you need sperm to fertilize the egg. So it becomes challenging in the fact that there are less um, options for those patients that either don't have a partner um, or are unwilling to use donor sperm because now we're talking experimental options. Uh, for those individuals who are not able to crowd preserve a semen sample, uh, they can crowd preserve tissue now um, that will be available to them in the future when methods that are currently in the research pipeline finally reach the clinic. Institutions across the country now um, both affiliated with universities and private practices are beginning to free offer women freezing their eggs. Um, and so at least after stimulating them, they would be at a point where they're mature so that when the woman is finished with her cancer therapy and years down the road is ready to have children with her husband, um, they could then thaw those eggs and hopefully the surviving eggs could be fertilized with her husband's sperm. Quite honestly, at the time, I, I don't know that I was completely worried about the fertility piece because I was worried about so many other things. Um, you know, what my prognosis was, getting through chemo, getting through all my therapy. I think it's hard to focus on the fertility part. It's something that's important to me, but um, I think fast forwarding that far down the line was hard to do when you're trying to deal with so many other things. When I first was diagnosed, I didn't explore any options. As far as fertility goes, I didn't know of any options. Um, so I wish I would have paid more attention to those kind of things. I wish I would have asked more questions about what could be done, more paid more attention to, I don't want to say probabilities, but you know, how sure are you, you know, that there would be issues in the long run, stuff like that. In high school, it was a little weird talking about like my adulthood. I mean, they were talking about, aren't you afraid of not having kids? Because I know some people say about like your husband, what if he's not okay with that and tell him early. And I'm just like, I'm fine. And when I get there, I'll talk about that. So it was a little scary and knowing what people talk about in school. I haven't, I haven't been in any, uh, I'm only 22 years old. So relationship standpoint, I'm not really at the, thinking about marriage or anything, at least with everything that has gone on. Um, I think, if anything, it just makes you grow up a lot quicker. Um, uh, just learn, you know, learn that there's, you know, more important things out there and uh, you just kind of got to grow up and deal with it and move on with your life. You know, worries about the future, obviously, I think anybody who has cancer in the back of your mind is the idea, is it going to come back? Um, but then certainly, knowing that I have had the discussion about how my fertility is going to be affected. Um, you know, that is something that I worry about to a degree. I realize I don't have a lot of control over it. Um, so it's something, though, that in the back of my mind is something that I worry about. It doesn't really bother me. I mean, whatever happens, happens. I know still about, like, the options, and I'm ready to take that on. I kind of went into it with... If, if I can't, I can't, I have them saved, but it's nothing I need to worry about because with the technology and everything today, all the advances, I feel that if, I'm, if I want to have children and when, I, I think I can do that. 
I think all AYA patients should know as much as they can about their cancer and the therapy they're going to receive and the impact it's going to have on their fertility so that they can make informed decisions. Studies have shown that in retrospect patients that have been educated about it feel better about their decision. So if they have not been informed about risks and their risks of their, to their fertility and their fertility options, then they should bring it up with their primary oncologist and, and, get, and get the facts. You know, for anybody that's diagnosed with cancer, the, you know, your world changes in, you know, an instant when you find out that that's kind of the path that you're going to be heading down. I think just to encourage, you know, just the same way that you would want to know as much as you can about your diagnosis, I think to be as empowered as you can to know what your options are in terms of um, the fertility piece, because it's something, you know, once you're kind of through the woods, done with the treatment, something that's you know, an important part of you moving forward with your life if having kids is something that's important to you. Your life is here. You can still live a life. You can still go through these treatments that the doctors are talking about with fertility, with the adoption, and your options are still up as long as you still have your life here. Don't concentrate it on, on the negatives such as, you know, whether, you know, you're going to have kids or not down the future or stuff like that. There's always other options such as, you know, adoption and, you know, other things that uh, there's alternative routes plus it's not a sure thing either um, that you are going to go infertile so you know always keep a positive outlook and concentrate on getting better and what you have to do now still focus on the moment and getting through the day and stuff like that but um, definitely ask more questions about you know fertility pieces or anything else like future health risks because it will come up eventually when you know your treatment's over you have a good attitude you gotta you have a good heart stay positive don't don't let the little things bring you down like fertility for instance your health is important and with the advances we have today I feel that uh, fertility can be taken care of and can still have children <laughs>